Today is better than Christmas. Fujifilm just announced a new firmware update for the X-T3. Roll intro. <laughs> Today we're gonna to be talking about the Fujifilm X-T3 3.0 firmware update. I'm gonna show you how to put it on your camera quickly and then I'm gonna go over the details of this new update. What you need to do next is grab an SD card. Make sure there's no important pictures or videos on it first. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is head over to the Fujifilm firmware updates page. I have a link below. You then scroll down and you will see that there is a new firmware update for the X-T3 version 3.0. What you wanna do is click on firmware download. At that point, you'll be at the 3.0 firmware update page. Now, if you wanna get information about the update, you can choose the language here. It also mentions some details below, but basically you wanna scroll all the way down to the bottom and click on, I agree, begin download. When you do, it doesn't start downloading right away. You actually have to go to here and click on begin download. Once the download is complete, you should see it wherever you saved it. On a Mac, it's defaulted right to the downloads folder, but it's basically a file that looks like this. The icon that you might see, the picture here, is probably going to be different based on whatever computer that you have. What you're looking for is something that says FW up 0019. That tells you that's the one you want. So the first thing you wanna do is take the SD card that has your firmware update in it, put it in the camera, go ahead and hold down the DISP back button, hold it down at the same time while turning the camera on. You will see this message right here. Okay, I gotta interrupt this video to tell you something. I was shooting it with an X-T2, and I was shooting an X-T3 to show you exactly what those screens look like. Well, unfortunately, my ISO and camera settings were set so that the outline, the body, the black area, the silver area was in proper exposure, but the screen was so bright that some of my screens got washed out. I apologize for that. So what I'm gonna do is try and grab some other screenshots and stick them in there. It's gonna look real amateurish, but the information's gonna be the same. Whether you're shooting video or anything else, check your damn camera settings. Back to the show. You're selecting body, and it tells you right here. You're gonna go from two point whatever, wherever your current firmware is, to 3.0. Move it up, click OK, and it's gonna give you one final, you're ready to go. Don't touch the camera, don't do anything. Just sit there and stare at it. Here goes. Still waiting, still waiting. And this is the message you should get, version 3.0, and you go ahead and turn off the camera. So now that you have it on your camera, what exactly are the improvements that are in this new 3.0 update? The first improvement has to do with face eye detection. New touchscreen functions have been added. Autofocus algorithm has been improved, along with the accuracy of this face eye detection autofocus. The ability to detect faces in the distance has been enhanced by about 30%, and autofocus tracking is now more stable, even when an obstacle appears in the way. These improvements in autofocus will apply to both still photos as well as video recording. We now have a new face select function that provides priority autofocus, tracking, and exposure on a selected subject when multiple faces have been detected. The priority face can be selected by using the touch screen or the focus lever. We'll have to see how that one goes. The next improvement is faster auto speed for subjects that are at a distance. Now they didn't provide any details on this, but they said that it's actually just faster. Cool. The next update has to do with the touch screen. A double tap setting and touch function has been added to the touch screen settings. By the way, these two new settings are all set to off by default. Now these new settings allow for a more intuitive touch operation when you're shooting, autofocus, and focus area select. So we'll have to play around with those and see how it is. The next change they made is to the eye detection setting. Apparently now when using the eye detection setting, only the focus frame on the eye is displayed. Next is when using the electronic viewfinder. The tracking function for the autofocus and the auto exposure area movement by touchscreen is improved. Not sure how they improved it, but it's been improved. Good, awesome. I wish they'd get a little more detailed with this stuff, but 
That's what they're telling us. Next, the push function of the joystick is now disabled when you're using interval timer shooting. Not a bad thing, it prevents you from accidentally tripping it. They also made some changes to flicker reduction. So the options are changed from on slash off to all frames slash first frame slash off. And when choosing first frame, the speed of CH continuous shooting has been improved according to Fujifilm. For the next part of the update, Fujifilm says, if there is no image of transfer order when turning on a camera, no message appears. Huh? I'm not sure what, <laughs> what that means. In fact, when I went to the details site and on the Fujifilm thing, I found three misspelled words in details number eight and number nine on the webpage. Fuji, you might want to update that. And finally, according to Fujifilm, fix of slight updates. Right, you see that all the time in software updates. You know, bug fixes, bug fixes. They never tell you what they are. You have no idea what they are. But as someone that has written programming code, I can tell you that it's probably a lot of little things and um, most of them you probably wouldn't notice, but it perhaps would speed it up and make it more stable. Lastly, if your primary and only camera is the Fujifilm X-T3 and you are using it for business, my recommendation is that you do not put the update on your camera today. Give it a couple of weeks. Let's just be sure there isn't any problem. I'm just saying, firmware updates, I would wait a few weeks, check the reviews, check online, make sure it's, it's good. However, if you've got multiple cameras or if you're a hobbyist or if it's not such a big deal and not so mission critical, critical to your income and your finances and things like that, yeah, go ahead and do the update. The procedures that I went through in this video will apply to the X-T2 as well, but don't, don't do the X-T2. This updates for the X-T3, but if you haven't updated the firmware for your X-T2, or if a new firmware update comes out for the X-T2, then you can use the procedure that I did in this video. It'll work the same on both cameras. That's all, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for subscribing if you are a subscriber, if you're not. And I guess I will see you in the next video. I'm gonna go check this update out, I can't wait. And yes, I'm working on this lens review.